Thank you very much, everybody, for joining me. Sorry about being late for a while. We just had the computer issues here, but I'm fine now. Um, so I can't see you, but you can see me. My name is Dr. Sigal Jacobson. Uh, I'm a dentist for uh, over 22 years now, um, with a lot of passion to uh, cosmetic and aesthetic dentistry, uh, mainly doing a composite in the anterior uh, area. Um, today in this lecture, I'm going to show you um, the a system that I created that will make uh, your working composite in the anterior area easier, faster, uh, more predictable. Uh, there is a lot of a variant to this system. You can create direct veneers, mock-ups, provisional, uh, shade guide, uh, your own uh, shade guide for your own composite. Um, I'm, uh, I believe that we as a dentist uh, have to preserve healthy tooth structure. Uh, we have to be very conservative and minimally invasive. And, and the reason is that if not, it's come back to us as a boomerang. You know, we can create, if we remove too much tooth, we create sensitivities, unnecessary root canals, uh, microfactures of, of, a, of a root. Um, and so I transferred my practice in the last maybe 10 years from mainly doing porcelain to more doing composite. And I can tell you that I have a very good long-term success with that. Um, because just composite, if you can see in the last uh, maybe 20 years, how do I go to the next slide here? Next slide, yeah. So as you can see in the last 20 years, we all experienced big changes in composite. Uh, composite became stronger and uh, more aesthetic. Uh, they polish better. They stain much less. I don't know if you remember in the past, we used to have 20 years ago, we, have to, we used to have composite, two composite that we mixed together and they were horrible. They used to stain, they used to fracture very easily. Uh, fortunately for us today, it has been changed. Uh, and not only the composite has uh, revo uh, revolutionized, also the dentin bonding system are much better, the, the light curing light. And this all en enable us to give our patient more, uh, better solutions. Um, still, a lot of dentists, they believe that if they do uh, composite, they give their patient a, a temporary solution. They believe that they give their patient something that is not long-term. And as a dentist, all we want is to give something long-term long for our patient. We want to have a stress-free dentistry, how I call it. And I read, I read articles and a lot of studies about composite and porcelain. And even Cochrane Review, which is one of the main uh, systemic review in the market, stated there is no significant difference in survival rates of composite versus porcelain ven veneers. And I can tell you from my experience, I have done composite veneers for 12 years. They're still there. Yes, they sometimes need a little bit more polish. And the last layer has to be a little bit more um, pronounced nicely when they come back. I have to maybe small chips, but nothing major. Nothing that the patient complain and like with porcelain veneers, if it's delaminate, it's a big problem. Another study that shows five years of porcelain veneer compared to composite veneers. And they found that after five years, 89 of the restoration with the composite were clinically acceptable. Whereas with porcelain veneers, 92% were clinically acceptable. This is quite close, 89 to 92. But let me show you the study about the five years of the composite. After five years, 11% of the composite veneers presented with failures. But what are those failures? Those failures are only chips, marginal discoloration, no secondary carriers, and no restoration was lost. So if you see those photos on the right side up, that's the one after five years. Those small discoloration, I can remove that. I can remove it with my, um, with just a, a nice polishing bear. This small chip on the incisal area 
of number 21, I can fix easily. The patient sometimes don't even notice that. That's called a failure. But with porcelain veneer, after eight years, the failures are serious. They are fractures. They are marginal discoloration. It is very hard to, uh, to change if you don't replace the, the porcelain. And there was a secondary carious because of the cementation. A, a lot of dentists, they tell me, Sigal, but if I were to start doing more a composite, I would actually not going to be profit. I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to lose money. So I'm going to show you uh, a, an analysis that we created. And it's just showing you that you can actually profit much more if you do composite. And the reason is porcelain veneer, let's say you will charge 1,000. In every country is different, I know, so you can say 100, but it's the same ratio. Because composite veneer is about quarter to fifth of the price of porcelain veneer. So if you charge for porcelain veneer 1,000, you will have to charge for composite 250. Expenses, the porcelain veneer, I have lab, lab expenses, uh, the stand, the temporary, the wax up, the impression material. If we calculate all of that together, it will come to 400. With composite veneer, if I will be very generous, it will be 20, which will be usually much less. How much time do you spend for porcelain veneer? Two and a half hours minimum. It's going to be on three visits. Composite veneer, you have half an hour, and here I was again, Sometimes with the veneer, you'll see it will be even less, 10 to 20 minutes. So if I will calculate the profit per hour, porcelain veneer will be 240, and composite veneer will be 460. What about the acceptance rate? Porcelain veneer, the acceptance rate will be much lower, while composite veneer, a lot of them patients will agree to do. So before we continue, I just want to emphasize I don't say don't do composite veneer, a porcelain veneer, and I still do them. But you have to understand this is a very a case selective thing. First, you have to do a very good diagnosis of the case. Look at their bite. If they are wearing their teeth, if they are grinders, stay away from doing porcelain. Do composite as a temporary for one year and have a look. They can always do porcelain later. Um, so it's, it's about case selection. And if the patient needs more than one, he needs six or eight, by all means, and he can afford it, do uh, porcelain veneer. They are also minimally invasive. But make sure that their bite is perfect. They don't have any malocclusion. So let's go back to the composite. So the composite, they are, um, as we say, they're many minimally invasive. We don't have to remove a lot of tooth to structure to do them. Sometimes I don't remove any tooth structure at all. They are affordable to the patient. They are excellent longevity, as I showed you on those studies. They are easy to fix. You can control the, the color by the, as in the chair. You can do one tooth because composite refract the light more naturally like enamel and porcelain will be less. So you have to do six with porcelain and you can only do one uh, with composite, one tooth. You leave the patient future option, and it is profitable for the clinic, as I showed you. So how come so many dentists, including myself in the past, are staying away from doing uh, porcelain veneer, and sorry, composite veneers? And the reason is that composite veneer is considered as one of the most challenging procedures in dentistry today. And there is a lot of courses uh, on hands-on how to do them because it requires artistic skill. Artistic skill. Uh, it is a lot of requiring a lot of time for me. Uh, and the outcome is not predictable. And as a dentist, we all say, why would we spend one hour on one tooth, whereas this one hour can be more profitable or, or I can do other things? for such a less money because it's just time consuming. Um, and this was my problem as well. And I tried to find solutions. And as all of us were uh, doing right now what you do as well, we are learning. We are learning from each other. And uh, I took continuing education and I went to the best uh, dentist in the world and I learned how to do composite veneers because I knew that the composite is a good solution to, my, to a lot of my patient problems. 
I tried, uh, and then when I come back to my patients after those hands-on courses, I realized it wasn't that easy. It become, it's still time consuming. Now I have to, now I know how to polish, how to create layering technique. It still takes me a lot of time and it's still not so much predictable. I tried all these solution, what you see here, I tried to do uh, impressions and do uh, stents and fill it up with floral composite, but nothing, uh, nothing was efficient enough. Everything was more expensive and took more time. And with the improved generation composite, I just realized they are much better and increased the demand of patients. More patients started to, to ask for me to do uh, composite because they learn it from the internet now. They know the options. And I needed a solution. And in 2014, I came up with an invention. It's called the Uvenir. Uh, and it's very simple. Uh, you all seen the movie at the beginning. Uh, if not, you can hook to the uh, YouTube. There is a lot of movies on how to do it. I will explain to you right now. These are templates. There are a set of templates that made out of a fiberglass material. Uh, it's uh, the material. I'll show you, it's uh, very durable, it doesn't break. Uh, you have premolar to premolar, upper and lower teeth in two sizes. You have the universal, which I call medium, and you have the large size. Each one of the template has a center line in the middle, you can see. It's only on the outside of the template. So you can actually uh, parallel it to the center of the face. Again, they are premolar to premolar. They're not canine. And I'm sorry about that. I just went forward. This second, guys. I'm sorry about this. We're going to also talk about today about how to avoid um, to do failures and we're going to talk about how to choose the right composite because it's a problem for everyone. So that will be at the end of the, of the lecture. At the moment we have thousands of clinics around the world. It is sold by Ultradent in almost every country in the world. It's called you veneer because we want you to veneer the tooth. We want you to start composite veneers. It's won a lot of prizes. A lot of dentists use it. Out of the uh, thousands of clinics we had, we had no one return, no one breakage. They are very durable and they go through autoclave. They are autoclavable, so you buy it one time for the rest of your life. You can move it from room to room, and if you lose one, you can order one. So as I said, each one of them is autoclavable. They're fiberglass-based. Uh, they will not stain or break. I will ask you after you use them, just wipe them with alcohol wipes and then autoclave them in a bag. And it has a Teflon-like surface, so you don't really need to put any uh, Vaseline or something. It will not stick to the composite. We already did it for you. It's like a Teflon-like. And of course, if you lose one, you can order one. So as a dentist, I thought that we want something that is reusable. We don't want to have a stock. How come the sudden shape will fit to everyone? Uh, according to the smile design rules and researches and studies, the central incisor uh, which will be for 90% of our patient between 10.4 to 11.2 millimeter and usually 80% length to width. And that was the uvenir actually. The, the medium small one is 10.2 millimeter, 80% width to length, and the large one will be 11.4 millimeter, 80% width to length. And the rest, the canine, the lateral, the premolar, they're going to go according to the smile design rules. And as you can see, a testimonial from a dentist, he said, I use it almost every day, and the size fits to most of my cases. What are the benefits to have such a system? You can use any composite you want. However, some, will be, some composite will be more polishable, some will be less. The same like when you work with the... With, so, with this, can you polish it at the end? Some will be more polished, some will be less. It depends on the particle size. I will recommend you to, later which composite I like to use. It will save you time. About 50% of the time will be saved. 
it, ha high, it has high return on investment because you buy the kit and we say you do one or two case and you basically pay for the kit. It will increase your clinic, you will profitability, you will start noticing that you're doing so many cases now with that um, and every day you will, you will be more uh, efficient and you will do more cases. You can do, um, you will do also stronger restoration because of that and that because you are blocking the oxygen inhibition layer and also by press, press, pressing those templates and curing at the same time, you will reduce internal voids. What is this oxygen inhibition layer? We all know that when we um, curing pol polymerized composite, the monomers become polymers. But if there is an oxygen in the area, it will interrupt with the process of polymerization. Some of the monomer will be open. That means it will stain in the future and it will wear off. That's why we recommend for other to really, really polish it well and get rid of that layer. The problem is when I polish it so well, I get rid of the anatomy that I created. Suddenly, my composite veneer becomes so flat. So, what, what uh, they recommend to do is to put some glycerin or Vaseline on the tooth and then cure. But with the UV veneer, you don't need to because you block the oxygen and then you cure. So, this layer, according to study, will be harder and will be stain much less. And you will notice that after patient come back after two years, it is still very polishable. What are the applications for such a kit? You can do a mock-up and I'll show you cases. You will do direct composite veneers, not only a direct composite veneer, you can do class 4, class 5s, any tooth fractures, porcelain repairs, diastema cases, and I can use them as any trim in trim solution for doing a temporary and I will show you how to do it when we do implants and we, we want to wait for three months or for the time that we need to wait. You can also do provisional for portal and veneers. That's a great application. And you can create your own shade guide. For every composite I have in my clinic, I create my own shade guide because this is uh, the precise guide. Uh, I cannot really use Vita shade guide. A1 from... Uh, from one company will not be a one from another company and we will talk about those shades but it's easy to create shade guide and I'll show you how to do it with you veneer and let's go uh, on some cases mm -hmm. you can see on this photo we removed the you veneer from the tooth look at the shine look at the anatomy you don't have to polish it afterwards the only thing if you want and choose to do you can buffer it a little bit with a buffer but I wouldn't do anything, um, no, don't touch the surface. Direct veneers. I want to show you some cases some dentists did from all around the world. This is from Albania. Teeth well stained, yellow. Some old composites. That's what she did. She did six. And bleached the teeth. What about gaps? You can also close gaps with your veneer. Another case from Albania, same dentist. By the way, this one, if you go on YouTube, we have the movie How It Was Done. Because this was done in layers. You can do layering technique with you veneer. How do you do mock-ups? Uh, I love mock-ups. I do all my cases with mock-up. Uh, even if it's a, uh, just a small case, first I will uh, apply it on the tooth directly on the patient. Uh, a mock-up is something very, very useful. And that's a case of a mock-up. This patient came to my clinic with tooth number 22, had an implant, anesthetic implant crown. It was too white. It was too bulky. And she needed a solution. Now, the solution can be other uh, porcelain veneers or composite veneers. I did a mock-up. I wanted to see how, what I can achieve with composite. Maybe I can mimic composite to look like this crown. So this mock-up is done for me and for the patient so she can see and she can approve the future work we're going to do on her. So first you apply the composite onto the tooth 
freehand. If you see in between the teeth, I've got some separation. Uh, you can use Teflon tape, or here in this case, I just cut a, a matrix, uh, a Toffelmeyer matrix, and inserted it in between the teeth. And I press the U veneer. And this stage, when you press the U veneer, you make sure the midline is on the middle of the face. You, and, and that stage, you take your probe and you clean the axis on the periphery. You cure the light through this template. And this is when we finish one. See how shiny it is. I'm doing a mock-up for the second one, the third one. And this is when I finish three mock-ups. A mock-up is a great motivational tool. As soon as the patient sees that, they will say, wow. And now you can describe them what is the difference between composite and porcelain. And you, you, uh, they can make it a, a fair decision. That's another case of mock-up. She came to my clinic with a, a uneven teeth, a small lateral, uh, kind of uh, com all composite in the middle of the 21 and, that, um, and 22. And an 11, sorry. And what I did, I did a quick mock-up on her. I didn't grind the teeth yet. Just created a quick mock-up to, to communicate with her and also to communicate with the lab technician about the proportion we want go to go to. Uh, I, if I decide to go ahead with that and to do porcelain veneer as she wanted, she could afford it. She had a great uh, um, uh, bite and she was a good candidate for that. Um, and then I used my temporary as a reduction guide. My mock-ups, I call them, as a reduction guide. And this is the before, the after with the mock-up, and in the middle is the work that uh, we did with uh, the lab. Now, you have to understand, usually, in this case, I will do a wax-up, and I will do my temporary with that, and I will, the lab will determine for me the proportion. But my mock-up, I use my patient as my wax-up, she was the, my wax up directly on her, and then I took an impression and I used them for my temporaries, and I used them for the lab technician to tell them, we like these kind of sizes, we like these proportions. That's a very good tool. <clears throat> you can also uh, fix cheap porcelain with composite. Uh, my protocol, which works, um, this is the protocol, if you want to take a, a photo of this, uh, it's, it's working, This uh, what I'm doing, I'm roughing the surface of the old porcelain. Here what you see is two centrals that has an old veneers. And I, we said to the patient, let's maybe just fix it with composite for now and later you can always change to porcelain. So how do you do it? You, you rough the surface with a diamond, a lot of water please. Um, you ha it has to be cooled, otherwise the porcelain can jump out and break. Then I apply the hydrofluoric acid, 9% from 120 seconds if it's a felspatic, and if it's an emex, it's 5% for 20 seconds. Then you can read it in the instructions. Then I rinse carefully the hydrofluoric acid because you know it can be some, it can damage the gums. And then I apply phosphoric acid for five seconds to get rid of the salts. I rinse and dry, I, put, I salinate for 60 seconds. Then I apply bond. I, love to, I like to apply my bond in three layers, never cure in between, just blow the air and let it sit there and do another layer. Make sure the, the alcohol or the evaporates from the bond. Give it time. Wait at least 10 to 15 seconds. Then you cure and then you apply your composite. In this situation, we did it uh, in, in two stages. One stage the U veneer uh, was pressed, then it was cut back, some teens were added, and then another layer with the U veneer. With the U veneer, you can apply as many layers as you want if you cut back a little bit the, the layer, the last layer. You can align teeth. In this case, she came up, uh, she came up to us after she had um, Invisalign for many years, and then the teeth shifted. She didn't want to go through Invisalign again. We bleach your teeth. Any way, any time you bleach the teeth, please wait two weeks with any bonding because the oxygen in the bleaching can interrupt with the bonding. 
So I wait two weeks, even in posterior bonding, regular bonding of composite class one, class two, I wait two weeks from any bleaching. Uh, here I use the go by uh, Opalescence Go by um, Ultradent. We bleach your teeth and we did only one tooth, which is tooth number 12 with U veneer. We brought it forward. That's a composite veneer. And look how straight they look, the teeth. Also, of course, we uh, also fixed a little bit from tooth uh, 21, but this was without U veneer. It's just a small chip. Missing teeth. And this is uh, something I want to uh, emphasize. I don't give my patient those removable partial dentures anymore. I use composite. The reason I don't use those removable partial dentures is that they are harmful for the bone graft, they are harmful for the, for the implant, and the patient have, cannot tolerate them so much. And so what, what do I do in this case that I wait, to wait for the implant? I get something that's called Rebond, but you can also, there is other company, that's a splint material. You etch and bond the mesial side on the distal side of each tooth. You apply the Rebond with flowable composite after you, you, you dip it in a bond first, some flowable on the tooth like it's cement, and I glue this Rebond to the teeth and just fill it up with flowable uh, composite. Here I, love, I like to use Genial Flow by GC. And then I build a pontic. I put some composite, another layer, press the U veneer. Nothing happens if you apply too much in the beginning. That will happen. You will learn how much to put. You clean it around the tooth. You can also spot etch and clean it like a cement. And that's the after. This patient can walk with that for three months or as much as they need for the implant to be, to be done. Um, she was too young to have an implant, so that was the solution. If they, if it, I, I always recommend you to remove two millimeter when you do that from the occlusion, even if the tooth has to be shorter, and tell the patient, please be careful, don't bite on the tooth. You can also do one tooth with composite instead of doing a crown. You can try to do a minimally invasive here if the patient cannot afford or don't want to do or need something quick. In this case, uh, uh, it was done with opacers and some tints, the ochre and the white tints by care. It's done in layers. You, first, you apply the first layer, which is opacer, with your veneer, cut back a little bit, apply the tints, uh, do another layer of, of uh, flowable composite and press the U veneer. Uh, in between those layers, you can apply um, prime or just bond. You don't need to etch when you do second layer and third layer. Those shade guides that I um, told you, to create a poly shade guide with U veneer, all you do, you just take a plastic coffee spoon, you can get them in any Starbucks or, or, or ice cream spoon, and you Put the composite into the template, press those uh, tabs, and then cure and remove, and you're going to get that one. And so for every composite you have, you can create your own shade guide. It makes your life so much easier. A lot of dentists, and this, was, this thing I found out later, use it for gum contouring. Then I tried it, and it works really well. When we are doing gum contouring with laser, we either, we're either guessing where we're going or we are doing a stand from the lab. In this case of the uvenil, you don't need to. You use the uvenil as your stand and you follow the guide. Uh, you, you just take your probe and you do some bleeding spots around this. You see those in the middle, you see those white spots. I, I probe and I, bleed, I do some bleeding areas and then I follow it with the laser. I'm going to give you some tips about the U veneer. Generally, how do you prepare a tooth for composite veneers? Uh, I get this question a lot. You have to do a minimal tooth reduction. Sometimes I don't even remove it all, but I always rough the tooth and I will always etch, even if I have generation six. Etching always improves the retention. 
uh, you have a minimal uh, tooth reduction. You have to stay on enamel. Please don't go to uh, dentin if you can. Do not remove the incisal part. This is not porcelain. Composite likes to lean on, on, on tooth. With your veneer, any high contoured area, you are flattening it. Okay? So there is no contour because I want the uvenir to create you the anatomy and nothing to interrupt in the middle. And the template should fit easily. All your questions, by the way, you can ask me. We're going to have some time after the webinar to, for questions. What do you use as a proximal separation? You can use your myelin strips. I love Teflon tapes. You just buy them in any hardware shop. And I can also cut my metal matrix band. I also get the question, do you put the composite into the, the tooth or onto the template? You can do both. You can, I like to put it, when I do my direct veneers, I like to put it on the tooth because I can control the quantity. How much do I need to put? I don't have to mess with a lot of um, excess after. But when I do my mock-ups or when I do my a temporary for my porcelain veneers. You can also do it with your veneer. Then I apply it in a template. How do you do the partial size? How do you do uh, uh, gaps and um, diastemas? There's two ways you can approach it. You can either use, uh, you press the U veneer first with the composite and with your fingers you tuck it at the back. You can also uh, build the, the silicone guides uh, if you want from wax up. This takes a little bit more work. You have to do wax up and then you cut the silicone and you can also build layers with that. So either way is good. What happens if I press too hard and it's not in alignment with the teeth? What happens if I still trapped air bubble, external one? It's so easy, it's only composite. If you're not happy from the result, just cut it backwards and do another layer with your veneer. Okay, so you cut the last layer, you apply, um, you can remove the last layer with sandblaster or diamond burr. I use diamond burr. And then you can apply unfilled resin or bond and do another layer, no need to etch. Some dentists tell me, but I like to use my layering technique. I like to get those uh, hello, the A2, A1, that's, that's okay. You can still do it with your veneer. We have some cases. Um, you do the first layer with your veneer. You cut back. You put your dent in. You cut back. You cut back with mamelons. Put some translucencies, enamel layer. Every time you apply another layer of your veneer with cutting back, like the lab where they do the cut back technique. However, what I found out after working with this system that you actually don't really need to do... Um, a multi-layer technique. And the reason is that today the composite they are more um, chameleon, they are, uh, they are more simple and they mimetic. You apply it on the tooth and it gets the color of the tooth. Now what happened with the U veneer, because of this shape of the U veneer, and this is the tooth, I'm going to get different thickness of composite in different areas and this will create different effects like our real enamel. Our real enamel doesn't have three colors. It has one color. But because of the different thicknesses, the dentin reflects in different colors. And you will get different thicknesses when you use the template. And this is with a single layer technique. One layer and you can see how many different colors you get. Just use the right composite. Another case of a single layer. Now we're going to talk about how to choose the right composite for the case. Uh, this is something we never learn in universities. Uh, every company, they have different shades, different colors. Uh, every year they come in with new composite and it's, it's quite confusing, I agree. I'm going to show you how I do it and in, in how it works. First, you have to understand, the most important thing in composite is the value. Determine the value of the composite is critical and this is A1 Sorry, this is A2 of two different uh, companies. And see the difference in the value. 
why there is different in value of composite. Different companies have, um, and you can see different values here. Why? Because different companies, they put uh, different uh, um, particles. Uh, nanocomposite, hybrid composite, the hybrid will be more opaque, the nano will be more translucent, more uh, chameleon. Uh, also, they, they, some companies, they, they on purpose, they put some masking, uh, some opaque, opaqueers in them. So, don't think that if you have one company of composite, that's enough. Because no, our different patients define, de 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 require different opacities. So, for example, this case, she wanted to go from A3 to bleach white. With one composite, we were able to achieve that because this composite was more opaque. Then we took a, va a low value composite for the second case because she wanted something more natural. This is my, this is example of my personal kit. And what I advise you to do, have several brands. Don't buy the 20 colors, you don't need to. Most of the color will be A1, A2, B1, B2 maybe if you want some very good bleach white from one company and some enamel translucency. But you don't need to buy those bleach white and enamel translucency from every company. Just one good company with those two. And from every brand, I have A1, A2, A3, B1, and that's it. I have also two tints, okay, and white from Care if you want to add some uh, effects, some fluoroses, you can use the white. And this is only one of my draws. I have another two of those draws. And I know you, because I do a lot of composite, but I found that one or two is not enough brands. And um, this is how I divide my draw. I have a high value composite, I have the medium value composite, and I have the low value composite. Each one for different case. You have to know your composite, don't change every uh, six months to a new company because your eye has to get used to it. Your nurse has to know them as well. My nurse is very good in knowing colors. I can um, right now look at the patient and I can tell him you are A2 from Empress Direct because I got used to that. It takes time. So it's a lot of practice with composite. Um, this is some of my example of what I like to use. High value. If I want to go from bleach white to... Uh, from, from A3 to bleach white, I will use Amaris by Voco. Medium value, Empress Direct, the Dentin Shade, and Vital Essence by Ultra Dent, I love them. The low value, just to fix small area for enamel, diastemas, and class 5, I use those. But I'm sure that you also have your own composite. Just divide them into low value, high value. Don't forget that different thicknesses of composite also create different uh, effects and value. Now, this is how I choose the right composite for the case. If you look on the right side and the left side. On the left side, we, this is how we learn to do in school. Just apply some spots of composite and choose. No, for me it's very hard. It's hard to, it's because it's confusing. Second uh, one underneath. It's already better because we cured. You have to understand, when you cure a composite, it will change the color. So cure it. Apply it on the tooth. No edge, no bond. Don't, uh, don't do the tooth that it will be too um, dry. Don't dry the tooth too much because it will be too white. We do it on a moist area. But why I don't like this system too, the second one? Because what about the incisor part? What if it will be too translucent there? So the way I do it, and and... You have to understand it's only costing you 10 cents to do. And it's a very important stage for you, for the patient. Um, I apply the composite directly on the tooth, same thickness as I would when I would finish. I cue the light and I look at it. Then I remove it and I try another composite. For me, this is the only way the mock-up is to determine where I'm heading. And only then I will go ahead, grind the tooth, Etch, if I need, yeah, of course, grind. If I don't need, I'm not going to grind. Etch the tooth and then start my work when I know where composite, which composite I'm doing. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some failures and why. 
Chipping of composite, a lot of dentists, they complain on chipping. So the chipping of composite will happen if you do not lean composite on a tooth, if you cut the incisal edge. And that's okay. Sometimes the patient, they grind their teeth and the teeth are short and they want them longer. How you can still do that, but don't do them too thin. Make it thick, even thicker than your normal tooth if it's possible with a bite. Composite, when they thick, they are stronger. No final occlusion adjustment in all jaw movement. If you don't do that, not only in, in, uh, in uh, the, the final, in a bite, in a inter, uh, you have to do the all movement. You have to do that. And if you see one tooth is hitting more on the composite, adjust the tooth. It's okay if you will adjust the opposing teeth. And if you don't have a good light curing, and some dentists, they still buy those cheap light curing from eBay. They do not cure. You think that they cure, studies show that they do not cure. You they, they just cure the out, out, outside layer. The internal one is soft. And then this is where they're going to break. Also, if you use a, a not a good bonding agent, you don't follow the steps. Another chipping that I didn't write here, if you have internal bubbles, they're also causing a chipping. But if you will use Uvenir, you're probably going to eliminate by pressing. Another thing that you will get is um, marginal discoloration. Discoloration. There's two kinds of discoloration. There is the marginal, and we're going to talk about it right now, and the surface. The marginal discoloration. Why it happens? At the cervical area, we have less enamel, more cementum, and the bond quality in the cervical area is not that good. So patient will brush it and this area will break. You have to explain to the, dent, the patient, it's easy to fix it after one or two years. You just add composite on top of it. Uh, also a reason for marginal discoloration is polymerization shrinkage. But the good composite today, they have minimal polymerization shrinkage. Uh, it doesn't happen as often. Again, it's easy to fix it later down the track in one or two years. Please do not use a retraction cord with hemocontaining hemostatic agent. They will stain. I like to use the viscostat, clear, uh, doesn't have hema in it, by um, uh, Ultradent. Um, any bleeding gums will cause discoloration. Try to avoid it. Don't try not to touch the gums when you do composite veneer. And don't press the composite veneer under the gums. Finish at the gum level. The most, um, uh, the big reason for having discoloration on marginal is, is when you etch and bond and you don't in, apply composite and you leave it empty. This is because bonding will stain. Uh, so what I do in this, uh, in this uh, situation, I will take a little bit of com flower composite or um, you can use a uh, permacil from Ultradent as well. And I just go around this area when I finish and blend it. So any, any bonding that is exposed to the stain will not stain. It is covered by composite. A surface discoloration, some dentists still think that if we, they use bond or flowable to gloss, it's a good. No, flowable will um, stain, bond will stain. The only flowable that will not stain uh, are the high fill flowable. An example is beautiful by Shofu, um, Genial Flow by GC. They're all high, high fill flow. Uh, you can use them, but any other I wouldn't. Uh, they will stain. Also, if you're under curing, please cure uh, for the whole cycle that you can, 40 seconds at least, um, with your light before you remove the uvenir. Under curing can also stain. Don't leave voids and also block the oxygen inhibition layer. We have a, a great uh, group on Facebook called Uvenir by Ultradent. Uh, we are sharing uh, tips, cases, uh, events. Please join us. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. Now I will, uh, I'm ready for any question or answers. Uh, just remember one thing before we finish. Please be minimally invasive. Be conservative dentist. Uh, it will create a stress-free dentistry for you. And, and, a long, and hopefully you'll get a very good long-term solutions for your patients. Uh, thank you very much.
Okay, now I'm ready. thank you. Seagull, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, th first of all, thanks a lot for your uh, entitling um, lecture. Uh, there are a couple of questions uh, which I will now go through. Uh, first of all, uh, there was a question from, just hang on a second, I'm looking for it. There's a lot yeah. of questions. From, uh, bloody hell, it always fades mm -hmm. away. Because because, okay. Um, I can see the question. If you want, I can choose some questions. Um, I can see yes, some questions uh, it's here. Yes, in it's in the in, in, in uh, chat box. Um, okay, the first question was, uh, what is oxygen block layer? Okay. Uh, we have a composite, which is uh, a monomer. When we cure it with the light, those monomers come to each other and become polymers. And this is how you get the hard surface. The problem is that when we polymerize with the light, the oxygen in the air will interrupt with the polymerization. And some of the composite monomer will be open. They will not come in a link. And what's going to happen, those open monomers that are linked to oxygen will stain and they can also wear off. So we suggest you either to block the oxygen with glycerin or with UV veneer or just polish it so well and you get rid of this oxygen inhibition layer. Get to the second layer underneath. So you have to really polish if you don't want uh, this oxygen inhibition layer in the future to stain or just wear off with brushing. Thank you. Okay. Next question. The next question is, can it be used in posterior teeth placement? A veneer, uh, we have it until pre un, un, up to the premolar, so you have 10 teeth. Usually for the molar, for the molar you, it's not in the aesthetic zone, so you don't need anything aesthetic there, and it's very easy to do. The surface is very um, easy to do in the molar, it's not so complicated. So up to premolar, if that's considered posterior, yes. Okay, next question is, uh, do we use only flowable composite? No, you, have, you do not have to use flowable at all. And that's a very good question. On the veneer, sometimes I apply a little bit dot of high fill flow and the, and the composite, the, high, the hard composite on the tooth and I combine them together, so I get a nice, um, a nice polish from the floorboard and a hard surface from the composite underneath. And then only I cure. If you go on YouTube, we have some movies that I show it. It's called Uveneer on a Patient, and you can see how I do that with two layers. One is floorboard into the template, but you have to always have to have, the, have hard composite onto the tooth, Nanocomposite, microhybrid, and then combine them together. Okay. One more thing. I what about add. this? In case, in, in, in case of you have a bubble and uh, on the outside, so just rough it and just do one layer of flow, high fill flow. That that you can do that as well. Uh, with okay, discoloration, I just spoke about the discoloration and uh, how to avoid discoloration. So next question. Next question is, what instructions should be given to the patient after doing composite veneers? Okay, you have to tell the patient that in the next 24 hours, avoid any uh, color, any colored food. I know the new composite, they are much better with staining, they will not stain, but I always say it as well. I always tell them, uh, don't chew, don't use your teeth my composite as a tool. Your tooth is not a tool. Don't try to open things with that. Um, any plastic bags, please don't use your teeth. We don't want direct pressure on it. Um, what else I, I tell them? Um, nothing really that they have to be careful because I've seen a long-term, very good long-term uh, success with that. Um, as a dentist, just make sure that it's a little bit clear. And when you adjust the bite, there is no one tooth that is hitting more on it. 
If there is, please adjust the opposing teeth. And I also tell the patient, uh, in, this is something I do. In the next two weeks, we might have a small chip because I don't know how maybe you sleep at night and what is the direction that you move your teeth. Maybe you have a habit. And then if it happens in the next two weeks, don't worry. Just come and I'll fix it. And when they come back, if, if maybe a very low percentage will come back with a fracture, I will fix this fracture, but I will not only fix it. I want to find this, why it happened. And I will fix the reason. I will tell him to grind the teeth and I will find what, where it happened and I will remove a little bit the opposing tooth and it will never, they never come back with the same fracture. Yes. Okay, next, next question. question is, um, can it be used uh, in posterior teeth replacement as a rebound? We already said that an up to premolar. Okay. Then the next question is, uh, any size for small kids? Yes, with the small kids, it's a very good question. Um, first of all, kids, when they have their permanent teeth, it will be the same size like our teeth. But with the milk teeth, the first teeth, we use the, in the juvenile, you have upper and you have lower teeth. You have the mandibular teeth as well. And those mandibular teeth, they will fit to children, um, the, the primary teeth of children, you will see. So you can use them for uh, children as well, definitely. A lot of pediatric dentists, they use them. Okay. Uh, then the question with a lot of ease at the end uh, from Yeha Ibrahim. Life span, please. <laughs> So I'm going to talk about lifespan of composite in general. Uvenir doesn't increase lifespan. It just gives you the last layer, the shape, the anatomy, the glaze. Uh, I can tell you that the glaze will last more because you block the oxygen inhibition layer and, and they will be stronger because of the uvenir. Uh, but otherwise, uh, I can tell you that composite veneers, in my experience, they last like porcelain veneers read studies there are studies again that shows longevity is the same if you do it correctly and it's not only about having good bond and new veneer there is so many things you have to consider when you do that uh, you have to consider the bite uh, you have to consider um, if you want to do it good the occlusion uh, adjustment um, uh, the application of bond as i told you i like to apply i always rough the tooth edge for 20 seconds wash and I apply three layers of bond. Don't cue in between, you don't want to make it thin, just uh, too thick. You just want to have thin it in between with air, air thin it and do another layer and wait for the evaporation uh, of the uh, alcohol from the, from the bond. Yes. Uh, so they, they will last. Rose. I have cases that they last 12 years. Yes. Dr. Marto Rosic uh, raised the question, do you use glaze or sealant? I use glaze or sealant. I don't use any glaze. I don't use any sealant. You don't need to because the U veneer itself, uh, when you will, if, if you will hold it, the internal size of the U veneer template has a glaze of its own. Uh, it's called a Teflon like effect. So you don't, it will be very shiny without you using any glaze. Uh, Dr. Onkai uh, Yabade asked the question, how many uses per uvenir are possible? That's a good question. Uh, we already tested about uh, more than uh, 500 times on the autoclave. Uh, they don't break. We don't have an even one breakage for the procedure that you do. They're fiberglass. Um, so you can actually use them as many times as you want. The only problem is that sometimes you lose it in the autoclave. So then you can order one template. You don't have to... Um, uh, buy the whole kit again. Okay, then uh, the uh, effect of bleaching on Uvenir. Okay, effect of bleaching. If you want to bleach teeth with composite, you can bleach teeth with composite. Uh, will the composite bleach? Not so much, but the tooth underneath will definitely bleach. Um, nothing will happen. A long term um, there is some studies who shows 
that bleaching on composite will uh, weaken the composite. Some studies show that it's not true. Um, I don't know. I usually, when I bleach the teeth, I will do it before I do the U veneer, and I will definitely wait two weeks uh, after uh, before I do any any bonding, any U veneer. Now, now a Are very tricky question. Yeah, I can hear you. A uh, very tricky question from Abdallah for whom uh, compared to Componier? Oh, that's a good <laughs> question. Uh, I, I use Componier in my practice. I still use them, uh, otherwise Componier. They have a room in my practice because I like to suggest my patient all options. Okay, so Componier. Componier is basically a composite. It's nothing else than composite. This is the composite you have in your drawer. But the, if, if people don't know what's, what Componier, I will just explain. There are prefabricated veneers that come ready. And you have, you, you have usually to do six and more. It's very hard to do one because they come with their own color. And even if you will put composite underneath, it's still very hard to do one tooth. So with U veneer, you can do one. With Componier, you have to do six. But my main thing with Componier is that the patient has to be willing to pay the money because Componier is about, in, in America, in Australia, I'm from Australia, it's about $60, $60 per uh, prefabricated veneer per case. So I will have to charge the patient accordingly. Um, with your veneer, it's only 10 cents. You put your composite that you have and you press and you get like Componier. Uh, why would I use Componier? I, I will usually use Edelweiss, which is a different company because their composite is a sintered laser composite, which is a little bit stronger than composite. Um, they come with the beautiful colors. They also prefabricated vanilla Componier. They call Edelweiss, and they they second to if you have porcelain, then you have Edelweiss, and then you have U veneer. This is three things that you can uh, offer your patient. Uh, Componier, I think it's uh, the whole kit is about two and a half thousand in Australia dollar. It's quite expensive to buy the first, and a lot of them I don't really use. Um, I will not use many of them, so I'm kind of stuck with a lot of uh, um, veneers that I don't need. And also, if I use one, I have to keep ordering one, so I have to have it on stock. So every case I do, I spend sixty dollar from the Componier. I will have to order another one to have it in my drawer. So there's a little bit of limitation, still a very good system. Um, there's a question um, from Abu Layla. Do we use only flowables? Can we use heated composite? Do we use flowable only? No, you do not use flowable in, in, in your veneer. You will use a regular nano-hybrid uh, hard composite, a little bit flowable. If you choose to put in the last layer, it has to be high fill flow, otherwise it will stain. Flowable, they stain. Uh, yes, you can use heated composite. Uh, I like it. I, there are some studies who show that this is uh, make the bond st uh, stronger. Uh, the, but if you, want, if you have it, it's good. It will work with the U veneer, definitely, yes. Uh, another question, in porcelain la laminate, do you prefer in sizzle lapping over other preps? Yes, you have to do, uh, when you do porcelain laminate, you always have to do inc incisor lapping. You have to uh, remove uh, the incisor part so that the lab can create as well. Uh, and it has to be thick, it has to be at least, you have to cut 1.5 to 2 millimeter from the incisor uh, lapping. Well, composite, you do not have to do that. Mohamed yes. Tolba raised the question, why should we put bond three times? Okay, that's a good question. We have to put this bond three times uh, because, first of all, this is how they, the company recommend to do it. <laughs> Second of all, um, when you do first layer, you wait. You can also create small bubbles there. So I air, air blow and I do another layer. I let it sit. I air blow and I do another layer and I sit it. This makes it much, much more stronger for bonding. And the most important thing is not only the three layers, is to wait 10 to 15 seconds for evaporation of the bond, of the, um, of the solvent in the bond. 
So it just uh, studies shows that if you do it three times or even four times, uh, it will be stronger. Another question from uh, Miss Sahu: Can I use in case of malocclusion? Yes, because com I would not do a portulan veneer in malocclusion. Definitely, portulan are bad. Composite veneers, I will do in malocclusion. I will warn the patient a little bit that they might cheat, but it's not a problem because I can fix the, the, the problem in the future from the opposing teeth. However, you have to remember, if uh, a patient grinds his teeth, if a patient is um, wear off his teeth, the composite will wear off with, the, uh, with this grinding because composite, they wear off, whereas porcelain, they will delaminate. So in those cases, what you talked about now, you asked me, malocclusion as well, I would prefer to do composite and not porcelain and see how it works. Uh, wait one year, see how the composite behaves. But definitely for those cases, composite is recommended. Yes. Um, which purse do you use? Okay. I never use the carbide purse. I always use a diamond burst uh, for the ex to remove the periphery the excess from the periphery I use um, extra fine diamond burrs um, they will be a flame shape like this flame shape extra fine diamond burr lots of water and on the incisal part I will use uh, softlex I like the softlex by 3M um, and that's it don't ever use any polishing on the uvenir because on the on the outside because you will get the most beautiful glaze in dentistry polish. Okay. Uh, next question is: Any comment on single bond system? On single bond system, yes. When you do when you use the single bond system on the on the anterior uh, veneers with composite, please always etch. That, that's all what I'm asking. Even if they say don't, if they say the edge is included in, in the system uh, because it's a single system, I always and studies show you still on the front teeth have to edge. If it's a posterior teeth, dentin close to the nerve, definitely I will not edge. But if I'm on enamel, there's no problem if you edge and you do the single bond. Okay, um, then. Uh, the most critical question, um, ah, okay, thank you, um, uh, Tina raised a question I couldn't found, um, please I raise it again. I think she asked about mamelons, she asked about mamelons. Yes, yes. So how do you create mamelons? Um, so that's easy, first you uh, apply the dentin. I like when I do the uvenil to use the body shade. I don't use so much the enamel shade. The enamel shade, they're quite tricky. They can look gray a little bit. Uh, the dentin, the body, this is what I use. And I do the first layer with the body. When I want to create mamelons, I will cut back the tooth like the lab technician does. And I create mamelons with my bear. I will cut and I will create mamelons. And then I will use a little bit of translucent material and press another layer of the uvenir. You will get beautiful mamelons. Okay. Uh, and now the most critical question. Everybody is really waiting for that. What is the price? Okay. So as, as you know, in every country, because of the difference in the uh, currency and differences in the uh, in, um, uh, taxes. Uh, I will tell you the price in America is usually uh, 600 or close to $700. Every country is uh, different, but it's something around there. Um, and the reason is that uh, the price is like that is the material that I use to give you this souvenir is a very expensive material. It's a fiberglass, so you can reuse them more than 500 times. Um, you have the mandibular and you have the upper. You have 32 templates. I think if you lose one, it's something about $30 to buy a new one. Um, so you have 32 templates inside the kit. Uh, you do one or two cases and you pay for the kit. This will stay with you forever. So please consider 
uh, to, to get one kit. I'm sure you will enjoy it. And I'm here, uh, you're gonna get, you have my email, I'll give it to you again. Any questions, come to our group in Altered and you've been by Altered and ask me questions. I would love to guide you through your cases as well. Okay, um, Jeremy Cooper um, raised or said something. It was not a question, it was something very nice. For provisionals made from ProTem or similar material, do you see air abrasion and bond if using Uvenir with composite? I found, uh, I, oh, I have found it works amazingly well. Okay. No, it's not a question. It's, uh, it was a statement, but it was a very nice one. Um, oh, Jeremy Cooper. Yes, how are you? I know this guy. He's doing a lot of cases with Uvenir. Um, he actually okay. writes articles. Yeah, it, it is. It is right. Uh, you can do a provisional from Uvenir. So if you prepare teeth for porcelain, um, I will just take a little bit of composite, apply it on the tooth. Uh, you can do spot etched, spot bond if you want. Um, I don't. I just apply the composite and I press on my crep the U veneer, cure, and I remove and I get a beautiful uh, um, temporary provisional uh, veneers. And I found that it just locks in between the teeth, so it's hold. But if you're still scared, you can do spot etched, spot bond, no problem. Okay, <clears throat> so I guess we can come to an end. Um, Seagull, thanks a lot for this amazing lecture and for your patience. Sorry for the inconvenience uh, when we start next time. We are sure it won't happen again. You did it perfectly and as usual. Uh, I also wanted to make you aware of our next webinar, which is on the 8th of May about um, Bright Tonics, which is a, a brilliant new invention in terms of uh, mouth rejuvenation and teeth whitening without peroxides, without side effects. Uh, this lecture will be done by Gennady Nashan, the founder of Bright Tonics and the CEO. And uh, if you're interested in that, please follow our links uh, on dukes.com. And yeah, I wish you all a fantastic evening. Have a great day, uh, time and hope to see you next time again. Have a pleasant day. Goodbye. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.